You might be using RESTful APIs, Google Firebase, or GraphQL as your backend, and that's totally cool. But what if I tell you that you can build your own backend with the same Dart language? And hold on, I'm not talking about some proof of concept project or just Hello World application. I'm talking about real world production application with scalability, RDBMS, inbuilt caching, logging, authentication, file hosting, and all sort of feature that you expect from production ready application. I'm talking about server pod, the missing server for Flutter. But first, let's understand what is server pod. Server pod is an open source backend written in Dart language and it supports Flutter out of the box. With server pod, you can create a Dart method and the tool will generate a client code which you can use it just like you know a normal method call you do in your Flutter application. And if you're thinking about how it stores the data, it uses a high performance PostgreSDB which is again an open source RDBMS. It has inbuilt caching mechanism with the help of Redis which is in-memory storage. So now all of this will make even more sense when we will actually try out and see how it works. So here's the basic requirement to start developing with server pod. So first of all, you need to have Flutter and Dart SDK installed and Flutter 3.0 is recommended higher than that. Next, you need Docker. So either if you're running on Windows, Mac or Linux, you can install the Docker for desktop. And lastly, you need to install server pod CLI to execute all the commands. So I already have Flutter and Dart installed and so you are. So we only need to install Docker. Some of you may have it, but if you don't have, you can go ahead and download from this website over here and then just install and log in with your GitHub account and just do a normal registration over there. And you should be in a good position to start. And once you have completed the installation, you can go ahead and run this command inside terminal and it will install the server pod CLI for you to check whether everything is working properly. You can write server pod and it should tell you what is the current version and it will give you the help command. So let's go ahead and create our first project. Okay. And I'm going to move to documents folder, clear everything up and server pod create and name of the project, which I'm going to name demo pod. Let's see. It says that you don't have a Docker install or it's not running. So, to run the server pod command, your Docker instance should be running. So let's go ahead and just run it. You don't have to do any other action. Just keep it running somewhere in the background. So now our Docker is up and running. Let's go ahead and try to run the same command again. Hopefully it should work now. So here it is actually creating multiple projects for you. There's a demo pod client. There's a demo pod flutter and of course demo pod server. Now, if you're running for the first time, it may take a couple of minutes to install all the dependencies. So just bear with it. Here it is, all the three projects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the server first for that purpose. Let's go to terminal, move to demo pod server like this and open Visual Studio Code. Now inside server project, first thing you have to look for is this endpoint files. So inside lib source, there's an endpoint files, which is actually your APIs. So hello is one of the API exposed to the client. If you want to write any other API, you can write here. And if you want to create a different client, so here, this will be treated as example client. If you want to create others, you can create multiple files here as well. Now for the readability sake, let me just go ahead and get rid of all the comments. Okay. Here we go. Now, don't get me wrong that I'm just going to talk about the Hello World application. Of course, in the next video, I will talk about the complete CRUD operation, how to store, how to create tables and all those stuff. For now, let's understand all the files structure it has, all the naming convention it has. So this is where you write API in the endpoint uh, file. Okay. This is something you need to care about. Now, there's a second file which you need to know while writing API. Uh, what if you want to pass something other than this primitive data type? Like if you want to pass your own model. So let me show you a real quick demo. I want to create one article basically. So I will say article class dot YAML class name is article. 
fields I have. And similarly, you can keep on adding fields here. So just save this file, go to terminal and run this command. Let me just clear. You have to run the command server pod generate. And now you will see the actual magic. So server pod generate command is done. If you go to the generated folder, there's an article class which is generated from your YAML and it has an article class, it has all the properties, constructor, serializable, deserializable, which you use like from JSON to JSON, all the methods. So you have the model created from this YAML file and we're not done yet. If you want to create a table for the same model inside database, you just have to say table and name of the table. That's it. And now let me also give you a quick tip. You don't have to write generate always when you are into development, you can just say watch parameter. And each time now you are going to modify your file, it is going to watch for changes and automatically run this command. So you just save it, your files, your code will be generated automatically. So I hope you got a little bit idea about how server works. There's uh, endpoints class where you write all your APIs and if you want to create your model you go ahead and create a YAML file for that and also there's a generated folder at the root level which contains all the SQL query automatically generated so that you can just copy this thing run in Postgres and you have the table ready over there and there are some server pod generated SQL as well which is used for uh, logging purpose to log the session to log the time for APIs and all sort of like inbuilt features and then there's a protocol.yaml which registers all of your methods and there's one more important folder config which has all the configuration for your different environment development production staging and there's a file for password which contains like database password for all different environments development staging production and whatever you want to keep it right so don't make sure that you don't check in this file the password yaml file so overall this server project has a complete configuration if you want to host this docker image on any of the site. This project contains all of the required information. You just have to run some scripts and you are ready to go. So here we have a dummy article. And now we'll go to the Flutter project and try to get this article. And if you remember, we have enabled the watch for generate command. So it is automatically generating all the code for me. So I don't have to write uh, the generate command myself. Okay. Now I can stop generating automatic code. Here we have the Flutter project. Now, if I go to the main file, just leave about all those code. You will understand that later on. Inside call hello, we are, let me just maximize it. Okay. We are already calling the hello method with whatever text we have entered. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this line and say test result. Okay. We are not going to modify whatever we have written. I just want to verify whether we are getting that newly generated method, which is called get article. And if it works means everything is working fine, right? So let's try that get article. Here we have it. And it is asking for integer parameter, which was expected. So let's go ahead and pass any integer. And then you have a test result of type let's see article make sense so it's just like calling another method inside your same program but in reality it's your server code which you're using with the same dart language so in the next video i'm going to create a brand new project with server pod and i'm going to perform all the crud operation i'm going to insert record fetch it, modify, delete, and we'll do it maybe on article. So make sure to subscribe the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button and let me know in the feedback how you feel about server pod. Is it going to be worth trying? And if you're excited to write your own backend code in Dart language. That's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.